the night of sinners at all. Loud the angry billows roar. Eager eyes are watching, longing for the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning. the way, some poor fainting, struggling seamen, you may rescue, you may save, trim your feet, poor left, my brother, some poor sailor, tempest tossed, trying In the darkness may be lost Let the lower lights be burning Send a gleam across the way Some poor fainting, struggling seamen You may rescue, you may save There are ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fall. But one was out on the hills away, far off from the gates of gold. Away on the mountains wild and bare, away from the tender shepherd's care. Away from the tender shepherd's care. Lord, Thou hast here Thy ninety and nine, are they not enough for Thee? But the shepherd made answer, this of mine has wandered away from me. And although the path be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. I go to the desert to find my sheep. But none of the ransomed ever knew how deep were the waters crossed. Nor how dark was the night that the Lord passed through, where he found his sheep that was lost. For out in the desert he heard its cry, was sick and helpless and ready to die. Was sick and helpless and ready to die. Lord, whence are those blood drops all the way that marks out the mountain's track? They're shed for one who had gone astray, and the shepherd could bring him back. Lord, whence are thy hands so rent and torn? They're pierced tonight by many a thorn. They're pierced tonight by many a thorn. But all through the mountains thundering and up from the rocky steep There rose the glad cry to the gate of heaven Rejoice, I have found my sheep And the angels echo round the throne Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own and trials are o'er, and I am safe on that beautiful shore. Just to be near the dear Lord I adore, 
will through the ages be glory for me. I shall look on his face, that will be glory, be glory for me. When by the gift of his infinite grace, I am accorded in heaven a place, just to be there and to look on his face will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be glory for me, glory for me, for glory for me, when by his grace I shall look on face, that will be glory, be glory for me. Friends will be there, I have loved long ago, joy like a river around me will flow. Yet just a smile from my Savior I know Will through the ages be glory for me Oh, that will be glory for me Glory for me, glory for me When by His grace I shall look on face, that will be glory, be glory for me. Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. Praise Him, angels in the high. Sun and moon rejoice before Him. Praise Him, O ye stars of light. Hallelujah, amen. And magnify His name. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Amen, amen. Okay. Uh, muli magandang hapon sa inyong lahat at welcome po sa ating uh, uh, Youth Bible Study sa Countryside Baptist Church. Uh, tayo po yung nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon sa panibagong pag-aaral na ito. Uh, we're, we're now on the part 2 of our Baptist Distinctives, particularly on Lecture 5 regarding individual soul liberty. So bago po ang lahat, tayo muna ay manalangin sa Panginoon. Dakil at mapagpalang ama, kami po yung nagpapasalamat sa inyong biyaya, patuloy na managana ang inyong pagpapala sa amin, sa, sa inyong salita. As we look into these principles of individual soul liberty, grant that uh, we may exercise these uh, uh, distinctives, biblical distinctives, uh, faithfully, and that we could continually glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, for this time. Bless our time of study. Is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so balikan lang natin yung ating natalakay uh, last Sunday, no? So we define uh, individual uh, soul liberty, no? So ito yung napaka-controversial na uh, aralin, in fact, uh, a controversial distinctive na kung saan tinatayuan ng mga Baptist, no? 
at uh, we look in the text of John chapter 21 verse 22 no, regarding din sa puna ni Pedro kay Juan uh, ito yung nagpapahihwating ng uh, soul liberty no? a more explicit text would be Romans chapter 14 verses 5 down to 12 up to 21 nagkalakay din po natin yan last time and then Acts chapter 15 verse 39 so you could all Uh, read this text no? as a background study. But we also define, make a definition of uh, individual soul liberty. So, sabi nga po dito sa ating notes, no? uh, kung may kita po natin, the Bible makes abundantly clear, especially in the New Testament, that each individual is responsible for himself. Yan po yung maliwanag dyan. No? Before God. And that we are to convince rather than to compel others regarding religious views. No? So, regarding religious uh, views, no? ang ating pong pangamaraan ay persuasion. Uh, we, we could convince somebody by means of uh, biblical persuasion, not by force. No? So, it's not the biblical way. So, yun po yung makikita natin dyan. Another thing is that this, this distinctive teaches that each believer has the right to shape his own beliefs and and live his Christian life according to the dic- dictates of his conscience. So, yung pong budhi ng tao, of course, ang budhi ng tao ay dumalago sa ayon sa liwanag na taglay nito. Of course, primarily, the, the light of the word of God no, ang humuhulma sa ating budhi. So, less exposure to the word of God, to the scriptures, ay may kita po natin yung uh, epekto nito sa ating budhi o yung konsensya. At the same time, and his interpretation of the word of God. No? So, yun po yung may kita natin dyan. No? Yung pananaw patungkol sa salta ng Diyos ay maapektuhan din batay sa dikta ng kanyang konsensya. While others have the right to correct another doctrinal errors and to rebuke their flaws in his Christian life. No one has the right to force another to abandon or adopt a particular belief or practice. Uh, pag uh, hindi natin pwedeng pwersahin ang isang kahit na mananampalataya na, na i-adapt ang ating doctrinal views ng kapilitan. No? Kailangan makita niya, makonvinsi siya that indeed that this is the word of God and that we could apply uh, we could uh, adapt this no, through our conscience. No. So, liberty is not a justification or never a, a justification for disobedience. Now, minsan, na, ginagamit natin justification, eh, ano na ako, malaya na ako eh. So, I could uh, freely disobey the scriptures or the word of God. So, hindi po tama yung ganyang attitude. So, an individual may choose to disobey, but So, liberty does not justify his disobedience. We cannot justify our disobedience by using this uh, fundamental belief or that is distinctive of individual soul liberty. Soul liberty does not grant the right to do something which will harm another's walk of life. No? It doesn't mean that if you are... Uh, Uh, free no? Dali lamang po Sensya na at mayroon tayong mga Mga sub messages no? Okay So, an individual may choose to disobey, but so liberty does not justify his disobedience. Liberty is not a license to sin. Some, yung ibang tao, ini-equate ang, uh, disob- ang kanilang liberty sa license to sin. So, hindi rin po tama yan. At hindi natin pinanindigan ng ganyang uh, doktrina. So, liberty does not grant the right to do something that will harm another's work. No, kung ito'y mga katapak na, mga ka-apekto, makakahadlang sa lakad ng buhay ng isang 
Kristiyano, kapwa Kristiyano ay hindi rin po tama may apply itong kalayaan na ito sa 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 kapwa. Mature believers should not flaunt their freedom. So hindi rin dapat i pagmalaki ang kanilang kalayaan or use it to the extent that it upsets or offends a weaker brother or believer just like in Romans chapter uh, 14. May kita natin diyan na na because of a weak uh, conscience na meaning yung yung application ng salita ng Diyos ay mahina pa sa kanya no ay siya ay lalabag sa kanyang konsensya. O isang example niyan yung pagkain ng dinuguan, no? No. Halimbawa, bago mananampalataya pa lang si si Pedro. No, at ang background niya ay doon sa mga kulto na nagbabawal ng dinuguan. So may struggle siya sa kanyang buhay Kristiyano, bagamat siya ay ligtas na at uh, may paglag mayroon ng katibayan ng kanyang uh, kaligtasan, ay may struggle siya doon. Etong si si Pablo na lang halimbawa no ay talagang nga namang pinagmamalaki niya pa yung kalayaan niya sa pagkain nitong bagay na kung saan may struggle tong si kapatid na Pedro. So nagkakaroon ng paglabag sa konsensya. Na dahil si si Pablo ay may kalayaan kumain ng gantong bagay, wala siyang issue doon. Si Pedro ay may issue, no? Napapasunod siya doon sa isang kapatid na mas, mas malakas na yung pananampalataya at ito naman ay lumalabag sa kanyang konsensya. So, so yun yung nagiging issue doon sa Romans chapter 14. So, if you're a mature believer, we should have a discernment and sensitivity whether to apply this uh, uh, freedom uh, sa mga bagay na uh, wala naman talagang Uh, masasabing kasalanan no? pero dahil sa may struggle sa konsensya ng isang kapatid ay hindi natin to gagawin no? we will not uh, do, uh, allow our freedom to violate the conscience of a weaker brother so we are a part of uh, body of Christ and that partnership in the body is realized through the participation of in the local assembly. Hindi rin nangangahulugan na kapag may individual soul liberty ang isang mananampalataya ay malaya na siya na walang membership. So, hindi rin tama yan. Uh, kasi soul liberty recognizes the growth of individual believers in the church. No? In the context of a local church. No? So, ma-violate din yun. So, at marami pang limitation na naibigay ko na sa inyo through the PowerPoint, so we could, uh, you could always go back to those limitations. However, we need to continue on our discussion uh, sa ating pag-aaral, no? just a simple review. So, we are looking into this acrostic Baptist, which is actually our Baptist distinctive. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, hindi ito marks of a true believer no? ang Baptist distinctives no? ito lamang ay ating distinction sa ibang mga evangelical churches no? uh, I pray that uh, and I hope that, ev- that uh, every believer or evangelical church would also adhere into uh, by as the Lord uh, teach them and the Holy Spirit guide them no? because these distinctives are biblical no? at at uh, I pray na ito rin ay kanilang uh, may konspira itong mga distinctives na ito. Hindi talaga ito nagbid, nagsasabi kung ang tao, ang isang tao ay ligtas o hindi. Ito lamang ay nagko-confirm whether you are into the Baptist heritage. No? Itong kung pang pinanindigan mo, no, aside from the Christological Orthodoxy and the Gospel, the true Gospel, we have also this Baptist distinctive. Of course, we, B is a biblical authority. Uh, yan yung pananaw natin sa banal na kasulatan. Wala nang ibang otoridad na maliban sa banal na kasulatan. Hindi ang tradisyon, hindi ang mga leaders ng church. Ang otoridad, ang salita ng Diyos lamang. Particularly, the, old, the New Testament, which is the, the rule, the sole authority of our faith and practice. 
no, as ba- in, our, in the Baptist uh, community. Another uh, distinctive is autonomy of the local church. No? Ito naman ay pumapatungkol sa autom- autonomia o yung self-governance ng isang local na iglesia or ecclesia na ito po ay uh, hindi dapat na uh, manduhan ng iba pang mga churches o yung mga mga para church so, yung government government nito yung intentional natin na church polity no? so the, the most appropriate church polity for baptist churches uh, now is not con- congregate is not uh, the one uh, adhered by the catholic church no and the uh, presbyterian type so hindi po ito yung dalawang masasabi natin na uh, yung tinatawag natin sa Catholic base is the Episcopalian type where in there is one head and then there's the hierarchical uh, authority down to the local church or the parish. So we reject that because uh, primarily ay hindi yan, it will not adhere to the autonomy of the local church if there are authorities over and above the local church that is not part of the church no so yung po yung makikita natin doon and then the presbyterian type which are representative from local churches forming a committee no at uh, sila po ay mag-go govern sa church hindi rin po natin yan ginagawa so that distinguishes us from the presbyterian polity uh, and most baptist churches are adopt- adopting the congregational type where in the congregation out among the congregation is the uh, authority but we know that God uh, provided leaders in the church in whom the, the congregation would acknowledge sooner or later. So, mas fitting po yung uh, congregational polity sa mga Baptist churches. And then also, we have P, the priesthood of the individual believer. No? In terms of our access to God, no? Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has already accomplished His task as a high priest, no? and we are priests unto the Lord. No? We have this access to the Lord by on the basis of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. No? Pagandang ano po niyan, uh, kalagayan ng bawat Kristiano that we have this equal access whether you're a, a clergy or a lady in the church no kung man ay leader sa church o karaniwang kristyano ay meron kang uh, pantay na access o karapatan na manalangin sa Panginoon gayon din ay kam, uh, pantay na karapatan sa pagsisiyasat ng banal na kasulatan ang the scriptures no ayan po ang makikita natin diyan na biyaya nitong uh, distinctives na ito. Then also, we discuss uh, the two church ordinance, not three, not four, only two church ordinance, which is baptism and the Lord's Supper. So, we already discussed this uh, intensively. Uh, last time, we also discussed the first part, which is uh, individual soul liberty. Uh, so, ituloy na po natin ito. Now, we could relate soul liberty and the church, the local church. No? Sabi nga dito, one need not feel compelled or forced to do anything against his own theological position. One need to, not to participate in anything he deems to be foolish, dangerous, or inappropriate. Of course, as individuals, we need to recognize the doctrinal position of the local church. No? Like in our church, we adhere uh, uh, to the... 1950 Baptist Bible Fellowship Articles of Faith no? yung ating full subscription to this as Bible Baptist then we have essential subscription also of the New Hampshire Confession of Faith of 1833 no? and for me personally I have the selected subs- uh, subscription to 1689 London Baptist Confession of Faith so your, yun ang ating theological position may vary but not necessarily con- it contradicts to the uh, position of our local church. No? Uh, pero sa ating pananaw, no? on our conscience, 
under this individual soul liberty, one need not to participate in anything he deems to be foolish, dangerous, or inappropriate. No? Sa, sa batayan ng kanyang konsensya o budi. Dahil na dun sa mga church ministries, no? na, halimbawa, uh, either a call for teachers to volunteer, ay, ano, no? Dali lang po. At ang sa tingin mo, ang yung skill set ay hindi appropriate for you to volunteer, no? Ay, magiging titing na mo ito batay sa iyong konsensya na maaaring hindi pa ako handa para sa gantong bagay. No? So, yan yung maaari natin makita dyan. No? So, there are things that are inappropriate, no? Even though, kasi because of our individual uh, Uh, so liberty as we apply this no however a believer should be open to learn yan hindi ito nagbibigay daan sa katamaran ang so liberty hindi porke malaya ka sa iyong budhi malaya ka rin magpakatamad no inuulit ko bawal ang tamad na pag pinag-uusapan ng individual so liberty because for for this uh, distinctive no we we should be open to learn No? Tayo bukas sa pag, pagkatuto. No? Hindi natin dapat hadlangan yung pagkatuto. Lalo na itong mga bagay na ito ay wala tayong kasanayan at wala tayong uh, masasabing uh, 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 solid foundation on these things. No? Particularly on the teaching of God's Word. Or perhaps participating on a new uh, ministry. No? Or uh, gospel uh, presentations. Or whatever. No? We need to be to open, to learn. And of course, we need to follow the leadership of his pastor, or his or her pastor. No? So, dapat ay matuto tayong sumunod sa pamunuan ng church. No? Hindi lang porque hindi mo gusto itsura ng pastor, eh, ba't ko ba susundin yan? Hindi ko naman kamukha yan. No? So, it's not individual soul liberty. No? And, yan po ay ay hindi hindi nararapat na na attitude at towards leadership na that warrants also uh, for individual soul liberty yung ating pagsunod sa mga sa leadership na pinagkaloob ng Panginoon sa church particularly uh, the pastors no okay church uh, should allow some wiggle room no meaning yung flexibility So, individuals can hold theological viewpoints that may differ somewhat from the official position of the church. And churches should, should also not dictate behavior on matters that the Bible says nothing about. Ibig sabihin na may flexibility no, uh, based on the maturity perhaps of the believer or uh, his exposure to the word of God. Para sabi natin yung yung theological position ng ng corporate church, ng local church may not be adapted uh, fully fully by the in individual believer. Uh, it will take time uh, as we persuade people to to continue uh, preaching the word of God through the preaching of the word of God we may persuade them that indeed this is the word of God. Uh, these are the doctrines taught by the Word of God. And our articles of faith uh, are, are these foundations. No? So, it will take time. An official position of church. At the same time, uh, this also warrants the church not to dictate behavior on matters that the Bible says nothing about. No? When the Bible is silent, we cannot dictate. But we could suggest no? the churches no, on the leadership could all always suggest na no, practical practicality towards things that the Bible is silent or says nothing about. No, alimbawa, yung ating mga song preferences, no, whether that be, of course, corporately, we agree to to sing uh, uh, two hymns and spiritual songs as stated by Paul. No? And songs. No? Yan yung mga, pero in a personal level, So, we cannot uh, dictate that. 
Well, perhaps ako uh, gusto ko yung mga makabayang sa kanta awitin. Uh, iba na mga katutubo, yung iba mga millennial songs or whatever, no? On their preference. The church may not dictate on this, no? Assuming that the the lyrics is wholesome, may naman yung titingiting na natin na parang lyrics sablay na agad, eh, hindi hindi talaga yan. No? We could always directly rebuke people listening to unbiblical or anti-biblical lyrics. No? Pwede yun. Assuming, pero assuming that the this uh, music is wholesome on its content, so we cannot really dictate. Uh, so, yan lang yung mga halimbawa, mga example sa pwede natin makita dito. Okay? So, church may advise. Yan. So, ito magandang gawin ng leadership ng church, no? On these things that are not really, kumbaga, yung tiyatawag na sa theology na things indifferent, or, or this is our ah, moral. Now, there is Moral, there's is immoral, and this is amoral. Meaning, these things may, on itself, by its nature, are not good or bad. Ah, ano ba yung mga bagay na yan? Ano ba, pera? Ang pera ba, immoral o moral? Of course, depende kung paano mo gagamitin yan. O paano mo na-acquire yan. Diba, kung yan ay na-acquire mo sa mabuting paraan, pinagpaguran mo, through your labor, Yeah, that's a good thing. Pero ang pera, halimbawa, galing sa pagnanakaw, sa kurakot, no? at kung ano-ano pang mga sindikato, ah, talagang masama yan. No? So, pero, by nature, yung pera, yung pera is amoral. Okay? So, yun yung mga tinatawag natin na things indifferent. Or sometimes, hindi natin masasabi talaga na directly na masama siya o mabuti. But if we will contextualize it depending on the usage or perhaps the acquisition of these things, doon natin madidetermine na ito ay masama. No? So, but of course, the church could always give guidelines for this. No? But they should not force compliance when there is no biblical uh, teaching. Okay? Marami pang issues na lalaro sa isip ko eh, pero wag na muna na natin bang dito. If a believer finds that he is constantly at odds with the leadership, he should find another church. Yan yung isa sa mga may kita natin dyan. Of course, uh, in finding a local, a local church, dapat ay uh, hindi lang basta mali rin yung attitude na basta liliba na lang sa church assembly hindi na magpa-participate, maglalaho, then after one month, or after, wag naman one month, after six months, nakita mo sa isang act, uh, sa isa pang church. No? So, sometimes, that's an issue of ethics. No? So, walang proper, ibig sabihin, hindi mo na ginalang yung leadership ng church, yung authority ng church, since you are a, me- a member of the church, and you are covenanted to follow the ordinance of the church, as well as the, the covenant, That, you, that whom you have agreed with together with the other members of the church, you're disregarding it. No, ay masasabi natin na hindi ka naging matapat dito at ikaw ay magiging miyembro na lang basta-basta ng isang church. No, may problema din yung tumanggap na church dahil hindi niya muna inalam yung background mo. No? Wala man lang formal letter of resignation from the other church or perhaps bor- verbal comp- uh, confirmation from the elder of the uh, the other church. No? So, may mga ganong procedure, but these are fluid. The point is that, dapat may merong transition uh, towards this. No? Kung sa, nakikita mo na hindi na tumutugma yung iyong theological viewpoint sa kabuuan ng church, no? you should find another church. Generally speaking, though, a member should seek to follow the leadership of this church. So, in general, if you are a member, you should follow Uh, yan yung kalooban ng Panginoon na tayo sumuno, sumunod sa namumuno sa atin. Diba? Napag-aralan na natin yan sa church leadership, no? So, may mga institusyon na tinatag ang Panginoon. Una dyan yung tahanan. Meron tayong mga magulang. Ang pangalawang pamahalaan. No? 
And then pangatlo ang iglesia, no? So may mga leadership structure yan na dapat na tayong magpasahok. And as we apply individual soul liberty, dapat yan talaga normal mood ng isang Kristiyano ang magpasahok sa pamuno ng iglesia. Next in line is are some perversions, no? May mga perversions o pagbali o yung mga abuses dito sa soul liberty na to. So, we will be discussing four of these items. Uh, Isa-isay natin siya, no? As we continue on our discussion. Okay, number one, soul liberty is neglected or misunderstood because it is easily perverted. On on way that soul liberty is perverted is that individuals may see themselves as na subject to any kind of discipline, teaching, or persuasion. Yan. Ang tingin mo sa sarili mo, Omnicompetent ka. No? Omnicompetent. Ibig sabihin, alam mo na lahat. No? Dahil you, you obtain this individual soul liberty, you think you are not subjected to any discipline, teaching, or persuasion. Yan. Yan ang problema dyan. No? Sometimes, no, may mga kwento pa nga ng mga pastor mismo. Ayaw pa disiplina. Bakit? Ang pastor ba member ng church? Yes or no? Yes, they're still part of the body. Uh, is the member uh, uh, covenanted on the local church subject to church discipline? Yes, according to Apostle Paul. As we look into the church discipline lesson that we have on the scriptures, no? So, yung nakita natin sa 1 Corinthians chapter 5, na hindi nga lang disiplina yun, eh. excommunication agad. Ang ginawa doon sa, sa isang immoral man na kinasama pa ang uh, asawa ng tatay niya. No? So, at the same time, the attitude doon sa Corinto ay kanilang pinap up pa. No? So, so, pag ganito ka, ka severe, no? ay the church is commanded to excommunicate. However, there are instances that we need to follow normally on the corrective sense of discipline we need to follow what is stated on Matthew chapter 18 regarding church discipline. That we could have a, a private rebuke, one-on-one -on -one conversation. So if the offending party, yung naka-offend, nakagawa ng kasalanan, ay magsisi ng kasalanan, at humingi ng kapatawaran, no, case closed. If not, we could have one or two witnesses that has some knowledge or full knowledge on the issue. No, pag hindi pa rin umam, umano, uh, we could brought it out to the leadership of the church and then the entire congregation. At uh, hindi pa rin nakinig sa buong congregation, excommunication. Bakit kaya itong kay, doon sa 1 Corinthians chapter 5 ay excommunication agad? Nasabing ganun ni Pablo ay ipinadala na kay Satanas. No, kasi because of the severity of the offense, no, such as sexual immorality for this case in the Corinthian church, hindi na dadaan doon sa sinasabi ng Panginoon sa Matthew chapter 18. Because the effect is not just personal, no, but for the corporate church. The entire church had been affected. The testimony of the church uh, had had been affected by the by the wrongdoing of this uh, brother. No? So, the decision needs to be immediate excommunication. So, pag in-apply mo soul liberty, hindi na nga nahulugan, na exempted ka sa discipline. No? Ang, ang pastor, pag nagkamali, kailangan disiplinahin ni, no? Ng buong church. No? Through, perhaps, another elder. Kaya nga, ni-encourage ni Pablo na magkaroon ng mul multiple el eldership ang church. No? Kasi minsan, yung sa kongregasyon na one elder church lang, natatakot yung iba. Ako, paano yan? Pastor, kung may kasalanan, huwag na nga lang. Huwag na lang. Kalimutan na lang natin. No, natatakot. No? So, as the church grow, so we need more elders. At yung magre-review sa kapwa elder, yung elder niya rin. No, sometimes, yung mga deacons at yung ibang leaders ay hindi, na, hindi magawa yan. But, that does not exclude an erring brother, even a pastor, to be an, under or subject to church discipline. No? So, hindi dapat malusutan yan. Of course, teaching. Importante yung teaching, no? Yung mga doctrinal 
uh, teaching through the preaching of God's words very important. Na hindi dapat kung ano lang natutunan mo sa Sunday uh, sa Bible school, yun na lang. Kasi may mga ganun kapatid eh, no? So, nakagraduate lang ng Sunday school, ay ng Bible school, ayaw na makinig sa Sunday school teacher. Ay, alam ko na yung brother eh, nung hindi ka pa pinapanganak eh, doktrina ko na yan. No, kaya, exempted na ako sa turo mo. Yan, yung mga discarding palpak din, minsan nakakainis din. No, kahit matanda na, dapat matuto pa rin. No, matuto ka pa rin. May mga learnings pa rin tayo eh. Kaya nga, tinawag ng Panginoon ng mga guru eh. No, anong purpose niya? Para matuto tayo. No, hindi porki bagito yung leader o bagito yung guru ay hindi na natin papakundan. No, that's a wrong attitude. In fact, that's arrogance. No, na nakikita natin sa mga mature, sa mga matatanda na, no? No, marinig, madalas kong marinig yan, eh, Brother Ed, wala ka pa. O, totoo naman, 1978 lang ako pinanganak. No, kung nabuhay ka ng panahon ng hapon, talagang totoo yun. Pero hindi nangangahulugan na may monopoly ka ng wisdom ng Panginoon. So, you cannot say that. No, maaari tayong makalimot because our mind is finite and we need to be refreshed. No? Depende doon sa pangangailangan ng church. So, hindi ka rin exempted dyan. And then, persuasion, ang salta ng Diyos. Ba't ka palagi ako pinipersuade ni Pastor Lem sa sa sola gratia or grace alone or sola scriptura, scripture alone. Ano kaya itong mga teksto na ito? No? So, an in- individual may not be exempted from persuasion. No? If it is the word of God and it's a biblical teaching, we need to be persuaded that indeed that indeed these teachings and doctrine comes from the word of God. Okay, wag mo natin hadlangan yan na tayo ma-persuade. Nako, pag na-persuade ako, ibig sabihin, pogi points kay preacher yun. So, hindi rin tamang kaisipan yan. Na siguro, because of your arrogante ka rin, ayaw mo mong matuto ka sa ibang tao, no, hindi rin tama yan. Kaya nga, teach one another eh. Diba? Serve one another. No, yan yung ano natin eh. Uh, motto natin sa church. Another thing is that it's easy to develop a just me and my Bible. Yan. Yan nga ba sabi ko. Basta may Bible ako. Ayoko na ng ano. Yung sinasabi ni Brother Ed na articles of faith. Ba't kailangan ko niyan? Ang pinaniniwalaan ko lang, Bible. Ah, galing, no? E yung kulto. Ano pinaniniwalaan? Bible din. Diba? Pareho lang kayo ng kulto. Ano pinagkaiba, no? Yung statement of faith ko. O, oh, ang kulto, karamihan ng kulto, walang statement of faith kasi mabubuking sila, eh, na mali. Eh. Pero tayo mga Bible, uh, uh, Bible churches, Baptist church, ay meron tayong articles of faith Because we believe that these are biblical foundations. These are scripture based. No? Kaya hindi ka pwedeng mag-develop ng just me my Bible. Eh. You need people around you not, uh, to, to teach you. No? At madagdagan yung kaalaman, yung biyaya mo, hindi man yung walk of life mo. Walk of life nila, no? may bahagi sa'yo. No? Et cetera and et cetera. So it cannot be just me and my Bible. No? where one refuses to acknowledge anyone else influence. Ayaw kong pala influence lang kay brother na yan kasi ano yun eh. May madilim na nakaraan yan eh. Tatapos na yun eh. Tinubos na nga ng Panginoon yan eh. Na move on na rin tayo. No? Huwag tayong mangusga based on the past experiences. But we could look into the changed life. Dapat ganun ang persuasion ng tao eh. Yes. Meron tayong pagkakamali sa nakalipas. Pero, tingnan natin kung paano siya binago ng Panginoon for, for so many years. No? So, let us not refuse to be influenced by somebody else. Lalo na sa loob ng church. Yung nga nakakalungkot, mas gusto mo pang panoorin yung video ng ibang mga preacher na sikat. No? Kaysa doon sa mga in-house teachers and preachers natin sa church na naghahanda din naman. Same Bible lang yung nahawakan. No? Yun lang, mas guwapo lang sila. Kasi may, taga, may makeup artist. No? Saka nasa air-conditioned room habang nag-podcast. 
Meron tayo, p- pwede na kahit saan tayo umanggulo dito na may konting ventilation, okay na. So, dapat hindi maging gano'n, no? baka mas may pinapan- pinapanood mo pa yung ibang preachers, no? Kaysa dito sa ating mga in-house uh, preacher, Pastor Lem, Pastor Randy, even myself and some others, no? Si Brother Rene, encourage kong i-podcast din yung kanyang, ano, uh, yung Bible study doon sa, ano, sa QC, no? Ang point doon, for us to be encouraged, no? And to pray also for, uh, for these people na kanilang pinaglilingkuran, okay? So, yun yung mga makikita natin per version, eh. Now, such a person may drop out of the church altogether because he refuses to be taught or led. Yan. Meron nga, yung batang mananampalataya pa sa church, meron yung babae. No? Gusto niya, rin recommend din niya kay Pastor Randy na, Pastor Randy, gaw, gawin mo naman, dyan ako na itong asawa ko. No? May konting argument, ganyan, ganyan. No? Eventually, na-discover ko. Yung asawa pala, pasuray-suray dyan sa may show boulevard. No, meron diyang ano eh. Malapit diyan sa GRU. No? Pasuray-suray. At may hawak na kung anong bote. So, doon pa lang medyo tagilid na sa qualification ng uh, ng pagiging jako, no? no? Kasi, yun nga, uh, ayaw nilang pasakot din. No? Eventually, this family uh, drop out. No? Because uh, they refuse to be taught or led. Ayan. At yung mga kanilang mga gustong gawin sa church, yung gusto nilang pagawa kay pastor. Ayan. Yun yung problema minsan eh. Kapag masyado tayo magaling, ayaw na natin na uh, uh, ipadaan kay pastor. Gusto na lang, gusto natin automatic execute. No? Hindi naman pwede yun. Even though you have a lot of influence or you have uh, a lot of things to say or to do in the church, no? so hindi pwede. Meron tayong leadership structure sa church. One might even argue that so liberty leads uh, to the fracturing and fragmentation of Christianity. Because we are all have this soul liberty and freedom that we could make Christianity fragmented. Meaning kahit iwahiwalay na tayo, kanya-kanya na. No? Magkanya-kanya na tayo ng paglago. No? Kahit wala na yung corporate growth ng church. No, that's wrong. No, kasi... As individual Christians, we need to be incorporated to a local assembly for us to grow. To contribute to the growth of the church and be benefited to the growth of the church. So, yun yung may kita natin dyan na uh, situation. However, believers must submit to the Bible and legitimate spiritual leadership from, from pastors and other leaders of the church. No, kailangan po masakop yung yung humility natin nandiyan. No? Hindi hindi pwedeng maging arrogant at maging mayabang dahil meron kang soul liberty. No? In fact, that's a perversion. Natititing na natin ngayon. No? It's part of the perversion. Believers must seek to balance their own personal spirituality with the requirements of the church authority. Yeah. To refuse such leadership and teaching is to pervert the doctrine of individual soul liberty. We need to balance. No? No, we know that the, the doctrinal position of the church, no, we need to balance it with our spiritual, spirit, our personal spirituality. No, na kailangan pasako pa rin tayo sa otoridad ng church. No, minsan talaga nagkakaiba yung personal doc, doctrinal uh, commitment natin sa church, no. But uh, this will not uh, hinder us to, to be under the authority of the church as well. So, dyan nagkakaroon ng perversion kapag uh, sumobra ka dyan. So, secondly, another perversion of soul liberty happens when believers neglect. Ito naman, neglect mo. Yung una, ayaw mo magpaturo, ayaw mong magpadisiplina, at ayaw mo magpa-persuade. Ito naman, neglect of your responsibility. No. Sin of omission naman to. To exhort one, and rebuke one another. Yan yung nakita natin kanina sa ating lecture sa Sunday School, no? So, we need to guard ourselves, no? In terms of our uh, doctrine, Christian doctrine, as well as our way of uh, life, Christian life, walk of life. We should not neglect their responsibility to encourage, no? 
So, we could encourage one another in so many means. Marami yan. Pray for them, fellowship with them, worship with them, serve them. Now, these are our responsibility as uh, believers to a local assembly. One, exhort and rebuke one another if there are sins uh, that are prevailing. Now, we could rebuke. No? We could follow the pattern of Matthew chapter 18 on this. Okay, so that's another. So if we neglect this responsibility, we're perverting individual soldier liberty. If one thinks that he has no right to advise a fellow believer, he will never confront him about his sin. So liberty should not prevent a Christian from his duty toward others. So yung katungkulan natin, nasawayin ang isang kapatid sa kanyang pagkakasala, lalo na't meron kang personal o direct, direktong uh, pagkaalam sa mga detalye ng kasalanan ito. No, you have the eyewitness perhaps, a direct knowledge, no? No. So liberty should not prevent us from confronting this brother in a private one-on-one -on -one confrontation or rebuke. Okay. May so liberty naman ako, so I choose not to. No, hindi yan, no? It's a perversion. No, you're twisting the disposition, no? of individual soul liberty. Dapat pa nga, mas lalo kang magkaroon ng uh, eagerness to confront and to correct brothers if they're sin. No? However, one must ensure that he is confronting someone over a genuine sin. And dapat tiyakin natin, nakasalanan nga talaga yan. No? Not over an issue of personal freedom. So, hindi yung mga personal difference, no? Sabi ko nga kanina sa Sunday School, these are minor issues na hindi naman nakakapekto sa image ng, ng church, ng Panginoon sa Kristo. No? So, yun po yan. Then, of course, next to this, ayan na, pangatlo na. No? So, so, dapat, this should not prevent us from correcting a brother. This, uh, that becomes a perversion of soul liberty if we will not be responsible enough to correct a brother if it's really sinning against the Lord. Uh, dapat magkaroon tayo ng ganyang uh, uh, approach. Thirdly, the third issue of this doctrine, of course, when a believer are unconcerned about their testimony. Yan. So, may kalayaan na ako. So, who cares about my testimony? So, you're actually perverting uh, this liberty. That is, they have care little about what others think of them. Yung patotoo natin, integrity natin. No, yun yung apektado, yung ating uh, testimony. And they may prove to be poor examples and even stumbling block for weaker brethren. And so because of your exercise of too much freedom, so nagkaroon, naging stumbling block, block ka sa mga may hinang brethren. Meaning yung kanilang conscience, may mahina pa, it's application, in the light of the scriptures, mahina pa yung application nito, nagkakaroon ngayon ng, uh, ng offensement sa ginagawa mong kalayaan, freedom mo, no? stumbling block. Such people become defiant in the, in the flaunting of their perceived freedom. So, pagmamalaki mo ng kalayaan mo, so, nagiging offensement yan doon sa mga may hinang kapatid. So, so that, that's a perversion of soul liberty. But Paul teaches that believers should do nothing that would cause a weaker breather, uh, believer to stumble or be offended. In fact, that is true in Romans chapter uh, 14. No? Magamit ka man lang itong aking scripture box dito. So, hindi ko pa nagamit ito ever since. Eh. So, anyway, this, this box is still experimental. No? Saka on your slides, medyo maliit siya. So, I'm, I'm thinking of using another software for this, no? Okay, so it says here, Romans 14, 21, It is good neither to eat flesh nor drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Yun nga, may struggle sa dinuguan. Huwag ka muna magpakalaya sa dinuguan at puto. No, alam mo, may struggle yung kapatid sa ganung bagay, 
di ba? O kaya may mga kapatid na may struggle sa mga patawa, sa jokes. May ganun eh. May nakilala na mga ganun eh. Kasi nga, dati nung di, siya pa, di, di pa siya mananampalataya, puro patawa siya. Puro mga jokes. O, so, yung, yung binago siya ng Panginoon, sa konsensya niya, parang ito pa rin ang isang gawin ng mga di mananampalataya. Bagamat, of course, may mga wholesome jokes, no? May mga wholesome jokes naman talaga na pwedeng pakawala ng isang mananampalataya. Pero sa kanya, struggle pa rin yan. Uh, siguro, de- depende. Kasi ang, ang conscience naman nagbabago yun, depending on the light of the scriptures. No? As the believer mature, so nagiging mas mature din yung kanyang conscience, yung appropriation ng light of the scripture sa kanyang conscience o buddhi. No? Pero sabi ni Pablo, it is good neither to eat flesh, nor drink wine, nor anything. Yung kalayaan mong gawin yung bagay na hindi naman immoral, wag mo nang gawin. No? Whereby, my brother, sa kapakanan, alang-alang doon sa iyong kapatid na maaaring matisod dahil sila ay may hina on their conscience. Okay? So, yan. Eh, dapat talaga maging sensitive tayo sa bagay na yan. Alright. Okay, believers must ensure that they don't tempt fellow Christians to violate their conscience. Ito pa makulit. May, meron ka nang struggle sa dinuguan, inopera mo pa ng dinuguan sa isang lunch fellowship. Ah, di na din nang na-violate yung conscience niya. Diba? One should, pay, should practice so liberty in quiet, respectful, non-offensive way. Ano ba, alam, kumakain ka ng dinuguan. Alam mong may, meron siyang struggle sa dinuguan. Huwag mo nang pakita. Huwag mo nang i-obvious na takam na takam ka sa dinuguan. Diba? May para naman. Di, may go. Wala ka muna. Atras, abante ka muna. O, oh, huwag ka muna pa-obvious dyan. Diba, ang problema, alam mo nang may struggle si kapatid sa dinuguan. O, oh, inopera mo pa, Brad. Kain ka naman, o. Oh. Pambira. Di lalong, ano yung konsensya niya. Si marami talaga, maraming mga ganung ano no, na hindi natin masabi talaga na eventually as the Christian grow in the Lord. So matatanggap niya 'yon. Kaya kailangan ng persuasion talaga ng salita ng Diyos eh, para ma-appropriate niya yung light of the scriptures to our conscience. Kasi yung conscience, salamin niya. Eh. Kung ano lang yung ina-expose mo sa kanya, yun ang ipapakita niya sa iyo. Kung less exposure ka sa Word of God, yun din yung papakita ng konsensya mo. Di ba? Proportional yan. Eh. The more you expose your, yourself to the Scriptures, the more your conscience become mature in the Lord. So, kaya lang, may mga cases nga talaga na bago, perhaps bago mananampalataya, so, huwag natin lalo pang ano, no? i-provoke sila no? to violate their conscience. One should practice this liberty in a quiet, respectful, non-offensive. Okay? O, iba naman. So, ano, may gambler kasi siya nung di mananampalataya. O, and binago ng Panginoon. So, sa konsensya niya, anything that is anything that is related to gambling is ano, is a violation of his conscience. Etong mga jako no mahilig magtongkit. Oh. Nakita nitong kapatid na to. Ay di, di nabailit yung conscience. Oh, pero kung sensitive ka, eh, ako Brad. Wag, wag mo na, ano na. Next time na. Si brother mayroong ano eh. Meron siyang struggle nito itong ganitong klase ng situation. No. Oh. Eh brother, eh, di ba gambling ay eh, ano? Kasalanan. Sabi ko nga, may mga bagay na amoral, no? So, yung baraha ba, imoral agad yun? Palagay nyo. Just play cards, a deck of cards, 52 cards. Halimbawa, gagamitin ko sa solitar, solitar, solitaire. O, oh, masama ba yun? Of course na. No, pero pag yung mga jako nun, nagpustahan na, ayun, ibang usapan na yun. Kaya lang kasi minsan, yung may mga, mga ganyang struggle na anything that's related to gambling, even though you're not gambling, 
may effect ko din sa conscious ng isang weak brother or sister. Okay? Ano na kuha niyo yung, yung point na yun? Ako, nawala yung scripture box ko. Ayan. Ayan, bumalik na siya. Okay? Okay, last. No? Ito yung port huling perversion natin. Uh, nandun na yung in-upload ko na to eh, last week. No? So, baka sana matrace nyo. So, pasensya na dun sa mga non-CBC. Uh, hindi ko ma-upload to in public. No? Only on our chat group. Church chat, chat group lang natin ina-upload yung ating mga presentation and lesson. So, apart per version of soul liberty, of course, when churches allow eccentric or even heretical views to exist without proper addressing them. Ayan, pag may pinapasok, because of soul liberty, bayaan mo na si brother, meron namang kalayaan siya sa pamamahayag eh, o sa kanyang panindigan. Eh. No? Siguro, mas call ito ng leadership ng church. Itignan ko lang yung drop frames ko ah. Minsan kasi pag drop frames, medyo may, mahina na yung ano eh. Alright, so far, wala pa naman. So, eto mas call ito, pero lahat ito. Lahat ito ng member ng church. No? Dapat bantayan natin ito na may, may pumasok sa na mga kakaiba. Kakaibang mga doktrina uh, o even heretical views. Uh, we must be guarding ourselves to this. No? But, especially the leaders of the church. So, hindi dapat papasukin itong mga ganitong bagay. Eh, because of soul liberty, okay na lang, bayaan mo na yung view ni kapatid. Meron naman siyang soul liberty. That's wrong. In fact, that's a perversion of soul liberty. Because it violates biblical theology. That is, if a believer is allowed his own opinion and viewpoint, and if the church does not demand that members adhere to common set of beliefs. Meron tayong mga tinatawag na orthodox belief eh, sa church na kailangan each one of us should adhere to this. And then secondly, our evangelical viewpoint, the gospel must be correct. And then in connection to this is our biblical theology. No? And then huling-huli na yung ating Baptist distinctives. Ayan. So if the church does not demand that members adhere to a common set of beliefs, no? tuloy natin, then the church will soon degenerate. No? Pinapasok mo yung maling doktrina, then eventually, it will, it will mutate. No? Pag mo mutate, to kakalat ito, until eventually, mawala na yung uh, orthodoxy ng church. No? Yung nakakalungkot ko. So, degenerate to the point that there is no agreement on doctrinal issues. Labo-labo na yung sa church. Kasi, nag-permit na, kumalat na yung maling doktrina, na-confuse na yung buong church. Kasi, at first, dapat ay hindi na ito pinahintulutan. Doon pa lang sa instance na mag nagkaroon ng deklarasyon sa maling pananampalataya, dapat tinama na yung isang kapatid na yan. Now, the church as a whole, not just the leaders, but the church as a whole, must demand that believers subscribe to basic biblical teaching. And the basic biblical teaching, of course, is our articles of faith. Uh, based on the BBFI, uh, BBFI 1950 articles of faith natin. So, by the way, saan ko makikita yan? Nasa website yan ng seminary. No? Puntahan nyo lang doon sa baptisseminary.blog then under uh, under the the articles of faith. Nandiyan yan. No? I-browse nyo lang at makikita nyo. You could download it and uh, it's in PDF file. So yeah, at least meron tayong panindigan dyan. No? So each one of us must subscribe to this because this is our basic fundamental belief as Bible-believing Baptist Church. No? To those distingu distinctives that characterize the church. Then of course, this secondary list that in, corolla in corollary to our articles of faith is our Baptist distinctives. Dapat. So, Every member must subscribe to and support the doctrinal statement of the church. Kaya nga, yan, ginagawa natin ito, even we read covenant of the church, every Lord's Supper, ay nakikita natin yan. No? At uh, sana, yun din, yung ating articles of faith, ay patuloy natin na emphasize na sa mga each members of our local church. 
Because there might be some perversion sooner or later pag hindi na-address. Ito mga bagay na ito. Katulad ng, ano, halimbawa, salvation by grace plus works. No? So, hindi pwedeng may plus works. When something that's added to grace, it's not grace anymore. Natandaan natin yun. No? So, yung, yung, isa rin, yung ating biblical response to the gospel is faith in Christ and repentance of sin. So, hindi pwedeng mawala yung isa dito sa dalawang ito. So, yung faith, pananampalatay sa Panginoong So Kristo at pagsisisi ng kasalanan. So, may mga uh, grupo na ngayon na hindi na kailangan magsisi. Kailangan mo na naman ng palataya. No? So, mali yan, no? So, we also adhere to Lordship Salvation. No? Kasi, kailangan tayong pasakop sa Lordship ng Panginoon. Not on His being God, but on His acquired Lordship during His resurrection. No? Kasi dalawa yung Lordship ng Panginoon. Una, pagka-Diyos niya as a Creator. So, siya ay Diyos, Panginoon, kasama ng Ama. No? And then, there's this acquired, acquired Lordship in terms of His mediatory work. So, nakikita natin doon. Kaya nga, kaya siya ay ginawang Panginoon. So, yung mga kulto, oh, tingnan nyo, ginawang Panginoon si Christo. No! Ginawang Panginoon in the sense of its mediatory work. No? Yung uh, mediation ng Panginoon na inatapos na gawain niya. So, kailangan talaga na tayo magpasakop sa pagkapanginoon ng Panginoon sa Kristo. So, hindi pwedeng faith lang, saka ka na magsisi. Saka na magsisisi pag tinanggap ko ng Lord si Jesus. Ngayon, Savior muna. Mali. You cannot, you cannot uh, dichotomize Lordship of Christ from His Saviorship so being a Savior hindi pwede isang person yung pinaniniwalaan mo eh. no? so pareho mong tatagapin yun yung pagkapanginoon niya at kanyang ang kanyang pagiging tagapagligtas no? so yan maraming I would say na nagsisimula dyan eventually ay mas malaking perversion so na dapat hindi natin siya tangkilirin sa church However, church should not intimidate its member or force them to adopt any teaching or practice that lacks solid biblical support. Kaya papansin niyo yung articles of faith natin. Lahat ng articles niya, those 20 articles, has its biblical support. You could always read them as a Berean. No? You could always uh, read them and be persuaded that indeed, this is the word of God. These articles of faith na na pinanindigan natin as Bible-believing Baptist churches. Those who don't agree with that the church teaches or stand for are free to find another church. Yan. So, kung ayaw mo, ano ba, hindi ka talaga adhere sa articles of faith ng church o kung kahit anumang church, no, may mga doctrinal statements yan, you better get out and find another church where you could agree to their statement of faith. So, yan, part yan ang soul liberty. Uh, but of course, we could, you could do that in the most ethical way possible. So, hindi yung uh, sa balutan ka, magpapatanggap ka sa isang church. No? Yung church man lang, hindi, hindi rin tinignan yung background mo. So, so, these are already ethical issues. Okay, so as I conclude this lesson, so we could say that that is have historically insisted that every individual has a liberty to choose what his conscience or soul dictates is right in the realm. No? So, yung at, in terms of the religious realm, may kita natin yung dikta ng konsensya na alam natin ang conscience ay batay sa liwanag ng, ng salita ng Panginoon. No? Of course, less light, less uh, magiging less yung application ng conscience natin. No? The more exposure to light, the better and the more clearer our conscience are no? in light of these uh, issues, spiritual issues. So, liberty asks the believer to accept responsibility. Now, we are responsible for our own action and not try to force anyone else to do something contrary to do uh, to his own conscience. So, hindi rin natin dapat po persahin ang sino man 
na gawin ang isang bagay na labag sa kanyang sariling buti. Okay? Refusal to acknowledge and accept the concept of soul liberty and failure to grant it to another is actually a doctrinal violation. Uh, on the receiving end naman, dapat tanggapin mo yan na mayroong soul liberty yung isang mananampalataya at hindi mo siya mampupupuyar sa doon sa iyong persuade, sa iyong stand. No, but, but you could always persuade these people through the teaching and preaching of God's word. So that's the only way we could uh, convince these people by means of persuasion. No, but not by force. So one of the difficulties of the Christian life is to balance one's own personal standards and conviction and doctrinal, doctrinal views which those held by his church. No, kaya nga kailangan tayong dumano sa unity of the, the church no, in terms of our doctrinal views. Ayan. So, in terms of our doctrinal views and our personal conviction, dapat mag-equal yan. No? So, yun yung tinitingnan natin dyan. But, of course, we need to balance this. No? We need to balance this on our, based on our personal standards. On the other hand, each individual believer is responsible for himself or herself before God. He must be free to develop his own unique set of beliefs and standards. So, may laya tayo. Meron tayo pwedeng i-adapt. Yeah, pwede natin i-adapt yung scriptures. Primarily, secondarily, the doctrinal stance or the articles of faith of our local church as our personal belief. Kaya lang, it takes time. We need to be persuaded by the Word of God and should not be forced to believe on these things. No? Kasi that forcing means violation. At the same time, we should uh, be open in terms of learning and teaching experiences. No, hindi dapat tayo sarado. Hindi natin sinasaray yung sarili natin sa pagkatuto at pagtatama ng ibang tao. No? On the other hand, the believer is or should be a member of a church and that the church imposes its standards and beliefs upon his believer. Of course, no? each one. No? Kaya nga dito, so very vocal tayo sa ating mga positions even in some current issues that we are experiencing, ay vocal tayo. No, yan, kung ano stand natin, panindigan, and then reminding the people about our our belief, our doctrinal stance as a Bible-believing Baptist church. Believers must seek to integrate and harmonize personal spirituality and church life so that what they believe personally is what their church stands for and teaches as well. Because each one of us as members of the church are representative of Christ primarily, but we are also representative of our own church. So, kung saan man tayo uh, nandoon, no? in terms of our locality, community, school, workplace, etc., and etc., so we're actually representing our church. At dapat, yung ating personal standpoint, viewpoint, should be should approximate the stand of the church. Yun po yung maliwanag siya. Okay, let's go to some discussion questions. These are quick. Then I will be uh, closing our lesson. So, sana naman may napulo tayo kahit pa paano. No? Kasi hindi palagi dinidiscuss yung uh, Baptist distinctives. No? Last time I, I learned this is uh, when I was in the Bible school. Tinuro yan. Number one, can one excuse his sin by appealing to soul liberty? Of course not. It's not a license to sin. Soul liberty is not a license to sin. So, yung maliwanag dyan. Number two, can one disobey his pastor because of soul liberty? If the pastor is wrong, of course, no? An explicit doctrine. No? Alam ba, narinig mo ang isang pastor. Okay lang magkaroon ng chicks ang pastor. Basta mapaprovide yung pangangailangan. Ayan, talagang mali ang pastor. No? You could disobey that uh, pastor because of that wrong uh, teaching. No? If the pastor is wrong, then yes. If you choose to disagree or disobey, 
you better have a solid biblical reason in doing so. Ayan. So, ilatag mo sa kanya, Pastor, ito yung maliwanan sa 1 Timothy chapter 3, that we should be a husband of one wife. No? And you should be above reproach. You should be blameless. Hindi lang less blame. Blameless. No? Et cetera, et cetera. So, these are solid biblical uh, reasons. No? In most matters, one should seek to follow his pastor. Kung hindi naman ganito ang issue, kung hindi naman mali ang pastor, dapat sumunod tayo sa pastor. Hindi lang personal issue yung titingnan natin. Kung tama ba yung tinuturo niya. No? That's part of uh, biblical soul liberty. While it is inappropriate for one believer to try to make another believer change, if the issue involved no clear biblical or et not clearly biblical or ethical, no? hindi naman siya, kumbaga, nandun sa kategory na amoral, ang bagay na ito, without biblical guidance, each believer is free to do as he thinks best, though one should attempt to force him to change. Ayan. So, ito nga, i, ano, open ko na may issue ng panonood ng ano, cinema. O. Oh. Uh, tanong ko sa inyo, is cinema itself right or wrong to do? Or is it moral or immoral? Palagay natin. It's amoral. No? Of course, if the content is wholesome, ano ba, manonood, papanoodin ko si Edrin ng ano, uh, say, uh, ano ba yung mga parties sa pinapanood niya, Ninayan Cut, mahilig si Edrin dyan. So, it's amoral. It's wholesome. No? So, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na immoral, pag pumasok sa cinema, immoral na. No? Napitingnan so, natin, ano ba yung context nito? Ano ba? It's a family show. It's a theater uh, play in a cinema. Et cetera, et cetera. So, wala tayo talagang pwedeng mapwersang uh, biblical uh, biblical uh, issue towards it. No? So, sabi nga dyan sa sagot natin, no one should attempt to force him to change. So, each believer is free to do as he thinks best. Kaya kami ni Misi, si, ah, nanonood kami ng cinema sa bahay. No, we have now our Netflix. Diba? O, oh, yan, daming pelikula dyan. Mga wholesome naman. Generally wholesome uh, movies na pwedeng panoorin sa bahay. No, kasi sabi ng mga kano, yan eh, sa demonyo ang cine. Diba? Saan naman nakuha nila yun? No, pero pito lang may context, amoral yan eh. Depende dun sa how will we appropriate our conscience based on our individual soul liberty? So, kami ni Mrs. nanonood ng sine sa bahay. Did we see? No. We enjoy our fellowship together, husband and wife. No? We strengthen our, our relationship. No? In, in some cases, uh, pinapanood namin sa aming anak, si Edry, natuto si Edry. So, I don't think it's uh, immoral. No, yun yung mga ganong bagay. No, wala talagang tiyak na biblical uh, statement whether it's explicit or implicit. Okay? So, mag-ingat tayo na mag-impose sa ganon. Lalo na yung mga leaders ng church. Don't impose on things that is not clearly biblical or ethical. Unless the, the effect of that is that you're violating the individual soul liberty of your members. Yan ang masasabi ko dyan. Okay. Is it ever appropriate for one believer to rebuke another believer? Yes. On the condition that there's this clear violation of biblical principle. Whether have a right and are responsible to call the fellow believer to repentance and change. No? Lalo na kapag may direct knowledge ka dun sa bagay niya, at alam mo na nakumit yung kasalanan na yun, you could always apply Matthew chapter 18 to this uh, believer. Uh, the first step is the private one-on-one -on -one confrontation. Number five, how can so liberty be perverted? So, na-discuss na natin ito in a lengthy way, 
But the summary is that by using it a license for C, number one. By using it to lead a weak brother to astray. Lalo na naging stumbling block tayo. Because of our freedom, now we become a stumbling block to other believers. That's wrong also. It's a perversion. By using it to disobey legitimate leadership. No? In applying my leader, uh, so liberty, ayoko nang sundin ng pastor. That's wrong. And then using it to reject legitimate church authority or sound soteriology. No? Uh, yung iba yung personal uh, biblical belief mo doon sa sa church position and you're rejecting it. No? Yun din ay hindi tama. So those are the perversions. Uh, summary perversions that we have. Number six, suggest some example issues. No? Ito, medyo mga ano to. Nabanggit ko na yung iba dito. Eh. In which soul liberty comes into play? Going to movies, no? Yung yan, ano yan? That depends on the context. No, ako, tatanong ninyo sa mga young people, wag, wag muna, dahil depende yan eh. No? So, pero ako, bilang pag-iingat sa mga young people natin, ang tatanong ko, kung manunod ka na siya, nag-aral ka na ba? Yan muna tatanong ko sa iyo. Nag-pray ka na ba? Nag- Nag-devotion ka na ba? Pag may isa ka lang oo, hindi na sumagod, o bakit ka manonood? May mga mas legitimate ka pang dapat gawin. Bakit ka manonood yan? Ah, yan ang test, test ko sa mga young people. No? Pag nakalusot naman, natingin ko tama sila. Eh di, paalam kayo sa mga magulang nyo. Ba't kayo sa akin ang papaalam? <laughs> o di ba? Kailangan eh, siyempre, for security purpose. No? Ano ba yung papanoorin nyo? Yan ba yung hulsang? No? Etc, etc. No? Pero ako, tietest ko talaga yung ethical, no? Pag, eh, brother, eh, kailangan ba talagang mag, mag-pray? Kailangan ba talagang... Oh, boy, yun ang priority, eh. Sekundary na itong mga leisures na ito, eh. Kaya nga sa GCQ, wala pa rin gantong entertainment, ano, eh. Sa mga leisure business, wala pa yan, eh. Yan yung pinaka-least priority ng gobyernong buksan, eh. No? Watching TV. No? Ang t- TV itself is not... is not, uh, immoral. May mga nagsasabing ang pas... Pastor, na-demonyo daw ang TV. No? I don't think so. That depends on the content. You could always uh, look at the content. There are many educational content. And we need to be careful. No? Dapat may mga filter tayo. Alba, nanonood ako ng balita. No? May mga filter na dapat nating apply. At pag wala kang word of God, yun nga, yung sa konsensya mo, ma-overcome ka ng mga napapanood mo. Yan din yung ano natin. No? Pero... Kung ikaw na yung mananampalataya na may constant devotion sa Panginoon at meron kang alam mo ang biblical theology mo, stand, no? you could always filter out sa mga sumisingit-singit ng mga hindi tama sa TV. So we cannot say, ultimately, that watching TV as well as going to movies are wrong and sinful. No? We could look at it depending on the context, always. Playing cards, no? So, yeah, no? Katulad ng example ko kanina, uh, cards itself is not sin. Yun lang, when you used to gamble, that becomes uh, a sin. So, nandiyan na nadidevelop kasi yung covetousness. Pag nanasa na sa, sa material na bagay, no? Ang iba na hindi mo nang pinaghirapan, that's covetousness. Okay, dancing. Well, there are some cultural dance that we could uh, uh, masasabi natin na uh, entertaining and learning because nakikita natin yung kultura ng isang uh, say locality no? nakapag basta walang ano eh walang sensual issue no problem on dancing no, for me no? pero pag in-apply na yan sa worship ah, ibang usapan na yan of course pag in-apply na yung mga sen- sensuality no, and other perversion, of course, yan ay hindi tama. Okay, music, so we have different uh, music preference, but in our church, we agreed to sing hymns, spiritual songs, and songs in the church, as prescribed by no less than Apostle Paul himself, no? under what we call the regulative principle of worship. But, aside from that, our personal, on our personal preferences, marami tayo, iba-iba tayong pre- personal preferences. 
no, na may kita. At huwag natin dapat hadlangan yung iba dun sa preference nila. Assuming that the content of that music is wholesome and does not, uh, hindi naman ito magkakaroon ng content na unbiblical. Of course, styles of dress, iba-iba rin ang ating mga uh, panero dito. But, dito sa, sa ating sa church assembly natin, so we agree also that uh, uh, we will have this modest apparel sa ating uh, church. No? Formal, no? because uh, we are gathering formally, this is a formal gathering, so dapat appropriate yung ating attire. But your dress at home, or dress uh, at school, or dress at your workplace, ayan, iba-iba yan. Na hindi, ka, hindi pwedeng diktahan niya ng, uh, ng church. Okay? So, yun yung ilang bagay na pwede natin makita. Example, you could disagree with me if you want, but for me, this, uh, uh, itong mga items na ito, masasabi ko na amoral to. Hindi, hindi palaging geared towards uh, sin itong mga items na nabanggit natin. Dito. Okay? So that we could always exercise our individual soul liberty on these things. Uh, even as practice. Okay? Okay, so, yeah, tingnan natin kung merong mga, ano, so far, wala naman tayong nakitang uh, question dito sa ating uh, page. No? So, yeah. Alright. So, with that, since I'm overtime na rin tayo, ano, so, okay lang. So, so far, we discussed this, Biblical Authority, Autonomy of the Local Church, Case of the Believers, Two Church Ordinances, Individual Soul Liberty. Next Sunday, Lord willing, we'll be discussing this, also this uh, important distinctive of saved church membership or the regenerate church membership. Napakalagang bagay niya, no? Na dapat ang... Uh, the entry to a church membership should be salvation. Yung seed. Uh, ligtas ka, tinubos ka ng Panginoon prior to your entry to the membership of the church. Okay? So, yan po yung titingnan natin by uh, next Saturday. Okay? So, salamat sa Panginoon at natapos na naman tayo sa panibagong pag-aaral. Uh, Magpuli-puli lang po ito, no? So, I'm thinking of two uh, meron pa mga sets of lessons na naiisip ko. One is conversion and the other one is evangelism. So these are basic uh, lessons that I could teach uh, during our youth Bible study. Sa Sunday school naman, I'll be focusing on introduction to biblical theology and expository preaching on our Sunday school. Okay? All of these are uh, uh, based on the 9 March uh, 9 March publication no? regarding uh, their church uh, March of a uh, true church nila. 9 March of true church so nandun yan so most of, of our our discussions or outline is based on the works of uh, these uh, people so I al also acknowledge uh, uh, these authors no? I think uh, it's Dr. Mark Weber, uh, Dr. If I'm not mistaken, it's uh, Dr. Jameson, and the, the other author. Uh, I forgot the, the name. I hope I could uh, remember. So, mayroon silang authors. Tatlong author yan na uh, it's time for me to acknowledge also. Okay, so Dr. Jameson, Dr. Mark Deber, and Dr. Jonathan Lehman. So those are the nine March authors. No? So we thank you for providing us material through your publication. So we all we uh, we, we have your uh, e-books no, on this no? uh, as a basis for our Sunday school and some of our youth uh, Bible study material. So we thank you for that. Okay. So, salamat sa Panginoon sa panibagong pag-aaral na ito. Magkita-kita tayo next Sunday.
sa ating bagong pag-aaral, Save Church Membership. That is the lecture number 6 natin. Okay? So stay tuned. Around 4 o'clock, we'll have our afternoon worship service through Pastor Len. So stay tuned lang tayo sa ating uh, CBC uh, Passive Ministries page. Okay? So salamat sa Panginoon sa pagkakataon ito. So see you soon. There's a royal banner given for display to the soldiers of the King. As an ensign fair we lifted up today, while as ransomed ones we sing. Marching on and on, marching on and on, for Christ count everything but lost. Everything but lost was for the King of Kings. Still tore lands deep beneath the banner of the cross. Over land and sea, wherever man may dwell, make the glorious tidings known. Of the crimson banner, now the story tell, while the Lord shall claim his own. Marching on and on, marching on and on, for Christ count everything but Lord. Everything but Lord was for the King of Kings. Real poor lands beneath the banner on the cross. When the great commander from the vaulted sky sounds the resurrection day, then before our king the faint and foe shall die, and the saints shall march away. Marching on and on, marching on and on, for Christ count everything but Lord. Everything but Lord was for the King of Kings. Still tore lands beneath the banner on the cross.